Hey, does anyone remember Sierra? Wait, that's too advanced for where we're going. Ah, oh, there we go. Did you hear that Roberta and Ken Williams are returning to video game development? It's kind of crazy to hear! Roberta Williams has been rightly lauded for being a genuine pioneer, and it's hard to say there's been many more influential games in history than King's Quest. If you want to be pedantic about this video's title, technically it's not the first adventure game. There were text adventures beforehand. There are even some with some kind of visual component as well, so you could say it's not even the first graphic adventure game. And this game did take inspiration from all of those. But when it comes to defining what comes to mind, when someone says adventure game, King's Quest unquestionably set the mold. It's like how a lot of people say Wolfenstein 3D is the first FPS, even though Maze War exists. Like, you know what they mean. But despite loving adventure games old and new, I've never played King's Quest. Or that much of Sierra's library, actually. Probably because this and most of their other games are older than I am. But that's not stopped me before, so why not load it up? Let's take a trip into the past back to 1984 and see where so many bright minds of the game industry first got their inspiration. Oh no, I'm dying. Oh, this is gonna be a trip. So the game just throws you into a field with no explanation. But fortunately, I do remember in the distant past, video games had manuals. And typically the further back you go, the more essential they become. So here, it's somewhat critical. Fortunately, the GOG release comes with a manual and a PDF. This version also runs through ScumVM, so big up to those guys. It's actually quite interesting. The manual's laid out like a fairy tale book, less about telling you how to play and more setting the story you're about to embark on. I will tell you this game is very, very earnest, so let's just settle in. It's story time. A long, long time ago, when unicorns still roamed the forests and the merfolk still dwelt in the shallow waters frequented by men, there ruled the Kingdom of Daventry, King Edward and his lovely Queen. The people of Daventry were prosperous and happy, and everywhere peace reigned. But the King and Queen were sad, because they were childless. They had no son to inherit the throne, nor a daughter to gladden their hearts. Wow, the daughter can't have the throne? How rude these archaic governments were. Anyway, one bright- oh god, oh this is long, oh I'm not reading all of this out. Let me summarise. The king is basically a fool who has fallen for multiple ye olde email scams. First, a sorcerer said that he can help them conceive a child in exchange for their magic mirror that tells the future. The sorcerer takes the mirror, but they still can't gain a child. Then the queen falls sick, and a dwarf says that he can cure her in exchange for the king's invincible shield. The dwarf takes the shield, but the queen dies anyway. Then the king meets a new beautiful woman whom he decides to marry. But on the night before they're to be wed, she reveals herself to be a witch and flies off with the kingdom's magical treasure chest which is always filled with gold. Wow, imagine someone running off with the whole royal mint on their back. All of these disasters have left the kingdom ravaged by famine, war, and plague. No, really, it's a total wasteland here. Now the poor kingdom also has a monarch who's nearly dead, with no heir. So he sends his favourite knight, Sir Graham, out to reclaim the lost treasures of the land. And should he do so, he can become king in Edward's stead. Alright, simple enough. Now we can get started. I'm going to be playing the classic AGI version. The adventure game interface was made specifically for this game, and then it became the bedrock for Sierra's games for almost a decade afterwards. King's Quest, Space Quest, Police Quest, Leisure Suit Larry, Quest. There was a remake in Sierra's more advanced SCI engine with enhanced graphics, but if even a collection of these games made by Sierra will talk about how people didn't like it and that it didn't sell very well, then I think I'm good? That version's also only available for purchase on Steam as well, and I don't have that. This game does look dated, 
There's no getting around that. This was an era of gaming where you weren't so much constrained on the amount of polygons you can render, but the amount of colours that you can use. King's Quest has a whopping 16 colours. 16! For reference, the NES had 56. At times, Sir Graham is going to disappear into the background. We're just going to have to live with that. Also, you may notice that sound is allegedly on. Let's turn off the music I have playing and really take it in. No, nothing's wrong with your speakers, that is the real audio. Or rather, lack of audio. There's maybe only a dozen or so sounds in this game. Not just music tracks, sounds total, as in sound effects too. You'll hear them occasionally, but most of the time it's silence. So I'm going to be playing music just to keep the pace and tone of this video together. Don't worry, you'll still hear the game when you need to, like with this goat. Magical. The game controls with the arrow keys on your keyboard. You don't hold them down, you just press a direction once and Graham will go until you tell him to stop. It is possible, in this version of the game, to use the mouse to move around. However, it's only used for moving and quick access to the menus. You can't even go between areas using the mouse. Or, at least, I can't without getting headaches. You might see the mouse making cameos throughout this video, just, just live with it, I know it's huge. To interact with things, you type things out on the bottom here. That doesn't mean you can do anything you want, it's limited by what the programmers thought to include. And we'll see how that pans out. So, first things first, let's go to the castle. You might think to knock, but then no one answers. Okay, well I guess I'll just open then and- Oh, Jesus! Okay, we're in. We find the king and he tells us what our quest is again. Just omitting the part where he is the reason everything is so bad right now. You can also bow to the king. You get a fun little animation from it. Look at that. Also, you get points from this. Points are basically 100% completion nonsense, and I'm just going to say right now that I did not get all of them on this playthrough. You'll see why. I am playing this completely blind and without a guide. This seal right here means I haven't resorted to a walkthrough when playing. If I break it, I've given up, and I will tell you. I'm trying to get the true experience here. This also means that I drew myself a map when playing. The manual recommends you do this too. It's messy, yes, and not just because of my terrible scratchy handwriting, but I actually got confused because it was a while until I realised that the map actually wraps around rather than having a boundary at its edges. Well, that's one way to make a 6x8 grid feel bigger. Anyway, back to the king. Naturally, I tried to kill the king, to skip the game and take the throne immediately, but sadly I'm not allowed to. Execution? There's no one else here! Plus, this guy cannot be winning popularity contests. You know... I wonder if he's called Edward after the English king, Edward the Confessor. A king who also had no heirs, and plunged the country into chaos and war when he died, as people fought to take control of the throne ending with William the Conqueror of Normandy taking over... Well, I thought it was interesting. Anyway, my quest is going to be much less bloody than that, at least. God, I bet Charles didn't have to do all this. Time for adventure! Things start off well by moving a suspicious-looking rock to get a dagger. I'm a knight, and this is how I get my weapon. I never use it as a weapon. I also don't have any armour, but I'm sure I won't need it. How dangerous can this be? You may notice I've adjusted my game speed in the corner. This is an annoying aspect of the game where normal speed feels like it takes ages for Graham to move anywhere, and the fast speed feels like I can barely control him. Plus, fast speed will mean I have less time to react to certain situations. It's not just the walk speed, it is the speed of everything. I fall into a lake here and I have to type swim quickly or else I'll drown. I later learn there's a hotkey for swimming. It's equals on the keyboard. No, I'm being serious. Jumping, crouching and swimming are zero, dash and equals. Welcome to old PC gaming! I exit the lake and search this stump and get a pouch of diamonds. Very nice. Treasures like that are mostly for points collecting, but it's nice when I find them anyway. Especially as there's no indicator of what should and should not be searched. This bush looks suspicious, but I can't do anything with it. The game has absolutely no clue what I'm doing, actually. A lot of this game is going to be me looking at trees, bushes, and rocks. 
be thankful that I'm trimming it down. I say hello to the goat, and then I enter the area I just came from, but this time a fairy godmother comes and blesses me. This blessing works for a short time and will prevent something from killing me. This is an interesting quirk of this game where some screens have events that happen, but not always. The Godmother is a positive example of this. Anyway, then I get a four-leaf clover. Hopefully for some luck later in the game. I find a cave with a boulder I can't move? Okay, guess I'll come back later. I wander around some more when I come to a cute little house. Ah, yeah, let's just be a peeping Tom through the window here and... Hardened sugar? Oh no, it's a gingerbread house. I've got a bad feeling about this place. Yep, yeah, I knew it. You get thrown in the cage and it's game over. Then I decide it's time to fight, and I try multiple times to run and stab the Wicked Witch with my dagger. I thought I just wasn't able to type it fast enough, but you just can't do it. You can't even run away from her. She casts a spell that freezes you in place. So, a few reloads later, I move on from trying to murder the elderly. To be fair, she was probably right to be angry that I just broke into her house. I find a walnut tree. I take a walnut. And the walnut is made of gold. Graham's luck is all over the place. Sometimes he's being eaten by a witch. Sometimes he gets golden nuts. I find another door into a mountainside, but it's locked. Another lake. Actually, there's a lot of lakes on this map, and I don't really know why. Now, well, let's just move on and... Oh, God, no. The witch flies off with me, and I just get this screen of being taken by the witch. I assumed I could do something here, but I couldn't work it out. Another game over. I go a different way, and a wolf spawns practically on top of me, and it's another game over. Jeez, I knew Sierra had a reputation for killing you in these games, but... Ugh. I find a well, and I figure it's some kind of puzzle, which is right, but I can't figure it out right now. I ride the bucket down, fall into the water, but can't figure it out before Graham's arms get tired, and he drowns. Alright, somewhere else then. I find a big tree. I climb it, and find a massive golden egg, which Graham then puts in his pocket, and then goof off and fall out of the tree. And this, surprisingly, does not kill me. I am floored I'm spared death here. Don't worry, then I go into a random field where an ogre comes and clobbers me. Can I just point out I haven't even been playing the game for an hour at this point? A disheveled woodcutter's shack? Why not? At least the axe is outside, so I can't get hacked to pieces. Actually, these are some of the only friendly people in the whole game. They are, however, poor and starving. So naturally, I try to steal the only thing they have left, a fiddle. Oh, but Sir Graham doesn't yet have the kingly right to claim the property of his subjects. I could bargain with- Oh, come on! I could bargain with any of the treasures that I've picked up, surely. But no, I can't. You can't eat diamonds, I guess. Next, I found a tiny hole with a green glow inside. You might think that means something, but I can't fit inside and I can't reach anything with my hand. Moving on. A river. Can I swim it? Can I buggery? And then I find a random bowl out in the world, just on the ground. Huh, it says the word fill inside. Well, naturally, I try to fill it in the river, but I can't. It won't let me. I'm quite puzzled. I was sure that was what I had to do. Anyway, I'll try something else, I guess. Then I come to a bridge, and wouldn't you know it, there's a troll. He wants one of my treasures, and then he'll let me pass. I figure treasure hunting is just for points collecting, and I really don't care, so sure, he can have something. On the other side is a gnome, who says he will give us something useful if we can guess his name. Now, the game obviously has a big fairy tale theme going on, so a little gnome asking me to guess his name? That's easy. Rumpelstiltskin, right? Everyone knows that tale. Turns out, no. Uh, did I spell it wrong? No, I guess not. Is it just gnome? Nope, but he gives me a key anyway. Probably fits that door, but I can't help but feel this is something of a concession prize. So I reload. I want to answer it. There's probably a way past this troll too without giving him a treasure. Spoilers, I succeed in doing neither of these. 
I find later that to get past the troll without giving him a treasure, it involves leading a goat to him who will knock him off like in the Three Billy Goats Gruff, but instead I just keep feeding the goat until I forget to close his pen and oh, he's run off now, so I'm not doing that. The gnomes puzzle though irks me. I want to solve that, especially as I was thinking, surely I was on the right track, right? Let me jump ahead a bit. Later on I sneak into the witch's house again and steal this note on the table. The note says, sometimes it is wise to think backwards. This does not reference the gnome and is basically on the other side of the map to the gnome, but I have a little wonder if it's maybe connected somehow. I don't know where else I can use it. So I go to talk to him again, but this time let's spell Rumpelstiltskin backwards. Nixtlitletmer. I have the right idea, my thinking is just a bit off. What the hell does that mean? I don't understand what you're talking about. Uh, I end up taking the loser key prize anyway. The puzzle is optional, whatever. But I look it up later, and if you guess right, he gives you magic beans. But both the key and the beans will take you to the same place. Yeah, it's just more points collecting. But then what is the right answer? Well, well, yes, it turns out you do need to spell Rumpelstiltskin with a backwards alphabet. Z is A, Y is B, etc. Meaning that this gnome's name, his actual name, is... My brain breaks just thinking about this. That is so obtuse. How will anyone guess that without buying a hint book? Oh, I'd rather have to solve the Othello puzzle in Danganronpa 2. What the hell? Oh my god, now my head is hurting just thinking about it. I Wait, do I just have to type in fill to use that bowl? Oh god, okay then, it's a magic bowl. I give this magic bowl of never-ending soup to the poor starving people. They will at least have one last meal. Graham, tell them that the bowl is never ending. Don't be a dick. These are your future subjects. I have the fiddle now. I can play the fiddle. Magical. I am going to play this fiddle in every single room until I work out what the purpose of it is. Suddenly, a dwarf. You don't want to get caught by the dwarf. Trust me, it's worse than a game over. I've basically explored and filled out the entire map at this point, so I bum around a bit before going on with the obvious path. I try to swim down a stream, but get killed by the current. Yeah, and this is when I go to the old witch's house and steal that note. Not before trying to eat her house, of course. Doing this gets you points. She's not here this time, and I think you need to find her while she's flying before you can sneak in. I don't know. The first time I try, I dally too long and she comes in. However, she freezes me on the other side of this table, and the poor 1984 programming can't figure out how to get around to reach me. I guess this counts as a game over? Weirdly, on my way to try again, I find a sorcerer, who also immobilizes me with magic, except his spell actually wears off. Nothing comes to attack me though, I don't quite know what his deal is. Anyway, I die again trying to get the note before finally succeeding. There's no more jumping around in time anymore, we're all caught up. Now, the keen minds amongst you may have realised something. A sorcerer, a dwarf, and a witch. These are the dastardly villains that scammed the king and took the treasures we're seeking. Remember that? That that's what we're meant to be doing? Getting those treasures? So clearly, we need to be sorting out these people and get our treasure back. What an astute observation. You must be quite a clever young rascal to think of that. You're wrong though. This is the point I've now taken the key and we're going to that door. It's the only lead I've got. Let's unlock this. Um, okay, then how about... Oh, then like this, I... Oh, come on. Come on! This time. Oh, Christ, there we go. I am not optimistic about what comes next. Oh, no. Stairs. Oh, I knew it. So you need to climb these stairs. But you may have noticed that I've only been moving in straight lines this whole time. How do I climb these diagonal stairs? Pressing two arrow keys at the same time does not make you move diagonally. Unlearn that modern sensibility. But there is another button on your keyboard that will... Page up. Yeah, page up. Page up moves you upright, 
page down for down right, and then home for up left, and end for down left. How many of you watching have even pressed those buttons on your keyboard? I get this was a long time ago before any kind of controls were standardised, but oof. And luckily I found this out by accident. I still fall again. The stairs aren't the only problem. Occasionally a dwarf comes and he'll try to attack you. And here's the evil trickery that this guy does. He steals a random piece of treasure that you have in your inventory. This includes important items that you cannot finish the game without, meaning you can be walking around and be unable to do anything. I believe this is called Dead Man Walking Syndrome. There is no way to get back what he's stolen from you. At all. I don't think he stole anything important here, but I reload anyway. I can't take the chance. Wait, does that still count as a death, or...? Oh, fine. If I see the dwarf, I basically exit and enter the area until he no longer appears. Yeah, because he's one of those events that doesn't always happen. Now, the Fairy Godmother spell can protect you from him, maybe, but I think this is your only other counter. Game design. Okay, now we're way above the clouds. If you're curious if the beanstalk is an easier way to get up here, I did try that on another save. Here's how that went. Fairy tales are still the name of the game, so no prizes for guessing there's a giant up here. And he's holding the chest! The first of these damned items at long last! God knows why a giant has it when a witch ran off with it. Did she have some debts to pay off? I find a sling here, and immediately I understand what I need to do. I need to David and Goliath this guy. Wait, but that wasn't a fairy tale. That's an Old Testament story. Roberta Williams, creator of the graphic adventure game and gaming's first atheist. Oh, but I don't have any ammunition for the sling. Turns out the only place to get some small rocks is this riverbed here. All the way back down. Here they are. Now we go all the way back up again. There's absolutely nothing else up here. Just opportunities to fall off the clouds. One, two, three. Well, I couldn't even see that one. Oh, uh, and one to the giant as well. I'd hoped there'd be a cool animation of him, like, wrecking Graham, but no. That'd be too fun. I kill the giant, and finally, I have the chest. I am one third finished with this quest. And now, it's time to move on to... Um... Oh, God. Where am I going? I really have no clue what I'm doing. I mess around with the well some more, but I just can't figure it out. I wander. I wander some more, but I'm lost. My brain isn't working. I'm losing my mind here. I don't know where to go. I just keep trying different things, or sometimes the same things over and over. Then, at one point, the dwarf appears in a random field and robs me. What did he take? The treasure chest. I do then come back to the well and think, maybe I can cut the rope. And I do, and it gives me the well's bucket. Great! I think? I don't think it's a treasure, so it must be used for something. But I've no idea what that could be. Surely I fill it with water. So let's go to the lake and... Oh, this isn't working. Uh, there was a water pump by the woodcutter's shack. I guess I have to use... No, no, this isn't it either. Much later, I work out I can fill it only if I'm in the water, not on the shore. So, I fill a bucket with water 
while swimming and then put the bucket of water in my pocket which is under the water I don't even know anymore. I wonder some more. The fairy's blessing saves me from a wolf. That's nice, but I still no idea where to go. There's only a few places I haven't feel like I've solved. The well, the boulder cave, and that mushroom that's across the river. But I haven't even the faintest idea where to start with them. I find an elf in the forest randomly, and I'm convinced that this this guy right here is what I need to solve my quest. And saying hello to him, he's so smitten with me that he gives me a magical ring that will let me turn invisible. But what do I do with this? I can't sneak around a boulder. I guess I could creep around the witch's house some more. But the fairy godmother's spell prevents the witch from even knowing I'm here, so I don't even need the ring. I open her cupboards and I steal her cheese. I also don't know what to do with this. I'm so confused. I tried to kill the sorcerer for a while, but to no effect. Also, I still don't know what his deal is. Then the ogre kills me again. My sanity has dripped away. My mind is feeling hollow and yet swollen at the same time. The temptation to break that seal and use a walkthrough is burning hot in my brain. I'm not even trying to solve anything at this point. I'm just goofing around. Look, there's a giant condor on this screen. Sometimes he appears, sometimes he doesn't. I don't know. And I start jumping to pretend I can fly too. Look at me, Mr. Condor! Help me out! Take me away from this frustrating game! What? This is what I needed to do! I... I don't... This pure dumb luck breakthrough is the only reason I didn't resort to a guide. I was at my wits end with this and I just bumbled my way into victory. He takes me past the river. I can actually take that mushroom now. Grey, but it was like red and spotted. Oh, whatever. Let's go down this hole into somewhere new. Oh, sweet lord, it's not the same field. I've been walking around for three hours now. Man, you keep taking blows to the head like that, Graham, and your crown is gonna be a head brace. I venture forth into the cave, and oh my god, it's a rat! Quick, Albertans, shield your eyes! The rat messes me up good and proper the first time around. But this is where the cheese comes in handy. He fills up on the Swiss and goes away. The rat magically merges with the wall. This is never explained or elaborated on. Daventry is just infested with wall rats. Okay. Do I really want to be kingdom of this place? So what could be behind this door? Oh, leprechauns, of course. Fortunately, they respect me because I have that four leaf clover from way, way back then. Oh, what good people these are. You know, I think I quite like them. At least they're not trying to kill me. Oh God, oh no, why? Why? This noise, why is it repeating? Oh Christ, I'm stealing the shield, goodbye. Uh, time to leave. Oh, it's that hole that I'm too big for. And I'm still too big. Ah, uh, maybe there's another way out? Ah! Okay, I play the fiddle at one point and it causes the leprechauns to dance out the room. No, really, that's what happens. And the noise is stopped too, thank God. The king also leaves and I steal his scepter. You know, stealing another king's treasures, that does seem like a reason to go to war later, Graham. You might want to think about this. Anyway, I eventually remember that I took that mushroom earlier and yeah, as you might imagine, it shrinks me down. So now I can pass through the hole, no problem. Okay, there's one item left, and it has to be either at the boulder cave or the well. I tried to use the scepter to jimmy the boulder free, but yeah, that's not gonna work. I go back to the well and think I can cut the rope free maybe. Maybe I can make some kind of pulley system to move the boulder, but Graham just lets the rope pieces fall into the water. Do you think this is a game, Graham? I don't. 
Not anymore. Okay, fine. I realize that I can still lower the rope into the well, and I come to the conclusion that whatever I'm meant to be doing, it has to be inside the well. That whole area they made for it was not a red herring. You know, unlike all of this area in the clouds. So, I crawl down the rope. You know, not before just trying to jump down and killing myself. But when I'm there, I eventually work out the right command I need to make. Oh, there we go. Ignore the very prominent bottle and can of Coca-Cola. They're just anachronistic distractions that will cause you to run out of breath as you type the commands to look or take them. Looking around, the game informs me that there is a hole. No, it's not over here though, it's that thing over there. Oh, and what could our final challenge be other than a terrible dragon? How will our noble hero defeat him? Well, throwing a bucket of water over him, of course. Oh, and make sure you're close enough to him, otherwise you'll just splash the floor. And then you'll have to swim all the way back up to the surface of the well to refill it. What? Refill it while you're under the water? Or just use the bucket on the cave you came out of? That's just silly. Now take this full bucket of water in your pocket and defeat this dragon. Anyway, one dragon thoroughly embarrassed, and we get the last treasure. The magic mirror. Our reflection shows us looking regal. Well, I'd hate to disappoint my own reflection. Triumphantly, we return to the castle. We bow to the benevolent King Edward once again. Always fun. And the game takes over from here. The king rises to greet us, presumably to congratulate us? Oh. Oh god. Oh dude, you're doing this now? Yep, the king dies right here. The stiff breeze from standing up from his chair was enough to take him out. Yeah, and we just step around his body to take our throne. And thus begins the reign of King Graham. May his experiences guide him well on his reign. So, how was it coming to this old game nowadays? Unbelievably frustrating. I'm sure you've picked up on that already. You know, I could rag on the game for not aging well, for being antiquated in its design and gameplay, but that's the wrong way to go about this, I think. I'm the one who chose to come back here, after all. And while it's fun to see how things have changed, it's not fun to just point out that an old thing is old. This game is one of the first of its kind. Of course other things have done it better since. The fact of the matter is, is that this was breaking new ground. Combining visuals and gameplay to tell a story in a time where the future of video games as a medium was completely uncertain. I've already gone through the game total, but maybe you'd want to go. There's still a lot of score to find. Roberta and Ken Williams' impact on the industry can never truly be measured, and I'm happy that I went through this game at least once. Maybe I'll try some of the others too. You know, Space Quest might be fun. I really like pulpy sci-fi. Hell, even Leisure Suit Larry might be a fun time, and I could do a video if YouTube approves of that guy. And in the end, isn't the feeling that I did something, that I achieved in my quest, the most important thing of all? Maybe, but I still would have had a better time with Monkey Island. 